Good morning, dear friends. Today we're going to do a review on cameos and cameo collecting. And the reason for that is when I first did my cameo video over a year ago, and um, it has uh, quite a lot of views, but I didn't realize that if I, I had put an age restriction because I'd, I'd, I I don't know, but I realized that YouTube, if you put age restrictions, very few people can see it. And this is really an educational video. So I'm going to review for those of you who have not seen my cameo collection and have not heard about cameos. So it's sort of an educational thing to just teach you about them and why they are valuable and why collecting them, in my opinion, is a wonderful thing. I've loved them for a long time, and I think they are beautiful jewels. Um, they are jewels from the sea because they come from shell. Um, they can be made out of other substances, but predominantly they come from this shell. This is called a helmet shell. And it is found in great abundance in Italy and Greece. And here it says made in Italy and it's signed. But see, so <clears throat> it's a very unusual shell. Look at that, the way it grew. It's very unusual. But anyway, Usually they will take the shell, and obviously it gets much bigger than this. This looks like a little one. Look how beautiful that is. Anyway, back to the cameo. <clears throat> they take the shells, they harvest them, and they cut certain sections off, obviously. some I've actually seen some cameos that are shaped with the nub of the shell like this, and they turn it into the shoulder of the woman or something. I might have one like that that I could show you. But anyway, <clears throat> they take the larger pieces from the base of the shell and they stick it onto a wood stick that has a waxy substance that holds the disc on. Then the artist, they, they flatten it out, they carve, uh, I mean, they take a pencil or some type of drawing instrument and they make their picture on it. Then the artist, takes it and he uses a type of picks and tools and they carve out and reveal an image because the shell has many, many layers. I don't know if you can see through there. I see it down there. So you can see the, the image on the reverse. And anyway, <clears throat> this was done since the Greek and Roman times. They've been doing this for years and years and years. But... Um, so I wanted to talk to you about the different kinds of ways you can see shell. Um, they also carve it from mother of pearl, which is generally from mollusks like the oyster. This is a very old mother of pearl cameo. Look at her hair. Obviously a, a very large bun of some type, but this is a very old cameo. And then they also made it out of conch shell, which is um, a shell found in the Caribbean. And uh, I think it's found in the Mediterranean as well. It's a very large shell. And the interior is pink. So see, she's pink. Let me see if I can get the alt lamp. Hold on. Well, anyway, you can see through her, but... I only have my aunt lamp and it doesn't really show that. But anyway, this is a very old cameo, set in gold. And I had a um, bail put on at a jewelry store. But I really love her, isn't she beautiful? So this is a type of Roman woman with the ringlets. Notice she doesn't have a perky nose. We'll get to that stuff later. And also they made them because <clears throat> yeah, I think almost everybody knows about Mount Vesuvius, which is at the base of Pompeii and Herculaneum, which I went to visit. And um, it exploded, uh, I forget exactly the day it, the, the, it exploded in, in the Roman times. Anyway, so it wiped out the villages of Pompeii and Herculaneum. And they, um, years later, you know, there's mountains of ash 
and lava. And it solidifies and you can carve into it. It is very fragile though. Let me take this out. And you see how beautiful her hair, the fruit in her hair, the leaves on her shoulder. She's wearing a necklace. This is set in sterling silver. This is a very beautiful old cameo. And these cameos, you should box them up, put them in a separate place. Don't ever jumble them together with your jewelry because they will chip very easily and be damaged. So these are more valuable. This has not a single chip on her. And this is another, uh, she is a follower of the god Bacchus and they're called Bacantes. And then <clears throat> I found this uh, lava cameo, which is more yellowy. It comes in like a yellow, white, gray, black. And um, this one didn't have any uh, bezel. So I created a bezel using turquoise pearls, mother of pearl, and tiny um, Swarovski crystals. And um, so later on, they started making cameos out of, uh, in the 1920s and 30s, they made cameos out of celluloid. And this is a very beautiful cameo of a Bacante. Again, notice the grape leaves and um, the, the grapes in her hair. And they made them into molded glass. And I love her because she's not a modern woman. She is a Roman woman. And she's wearing um, jewelry and the typical type of um, toga thing that they wore with the pin that held it up. She wears jewelry, earrings. She has a beautiful crown of something in her hair and pearls. So um, this has a matte finish on a shiny background. And I think that's a very beautiful, beautiful piece. Later on, they came out with, <clears throat> in the 60s, they made glass ones like these. And this one is different because they coated the, the image, the molded image in gold. So I thought that was very cool. Um, and then these I'm showing you for reference. These are modern. When you see these ponytail girls, they're plastic. It doesn't matter how fancy the molded uh, base metal is, it's modern. They are not real shell, they are plastic. And um, I, think, I think this one's a Sarah Coventry. So she's not a, a ponytail girl, but it's still rosin or plastic. Most of the real shell, which is my forte, um, comes from the helmet shell. And um, a lot of these represent gods and goddesses from Greek and Roman mythology. Um, the Greeks and Romans, you know, they sketched out what they what they knew, you know, these were their myths and stories. And just like the Russian lacquer boxes are Russian fairy tales, which the artists were familiar with, and that's what they depicted. The Romans depicted what they knew, and that was, you know, the beautiful women, followers of Bacchus, and the Greek gods and goddesses, which were familiar to them from their fairy tales. Well, not fairy tales, but from their myths and their stories handed down over over the millions of generations. <clears throat> so um, they came in all kinds of different versions. This is Psyche, the goddess of love. How do I know that? Because she has a stylized wing in the top of her head. But she wears a, a beautiful necklace. And she has what is called a Roman nose. This was set in a 
probably a plated metal, but it is very beautiful. Then you'll find these more modern ones. This is still shell. And you'll get used to seeing these kind of things. I think she's a locket. Uh, I'm not sure. But this is shell. And this was probably 1920. As the years went by, they changed the hairstyles. This is again a Roman styled woman on a base metal um, bezel, but it's very pretty. It's set with little carnelian stones. And then you have these things, they're called habillet, and there it's a shell cameo, but it's been enhanced with jewelry. Sometimes a necklace, sometimes earrings, sometimes a little crown in her head, but it's an added piece of metal into the shell. See, they had to drill into it. Here's another old one. And the quality varies from the artist, you know, who carved it. This is a 19, 1920s, probably. Notice the hairstyle. And this is a later one also. The little pin. I think this was set in silver. And, but the predominant amount of them are uh, women from Greek and Roman mythology. Believe it or not, that's a Florenza. That's a real shell cameo. But it's set in a modern, she's, you could see she has the perkier nose. This has a modern chain, signed Florenza. But anyway, so uh, a lot of Greek gods and goddesses. See, here's an oldie. And see, like a carver. I think he had a whoopsie right there and there. But he still carved her out. She's still beautiful. But I think that's where he might have whoops with his carving tool. Anyway, when you hold a real cameo, real shell cameo to light, you will see that it's see-through. And they're almost always, well, they're always concave because they were carved from a real life shell. See? This is Psyche with her butterfly wings. This is an old Victorian one. Here is one of Hebe and the eagle. Zeus comes down. Uh, in the form of an eagle. And she is the um, handmaiden who feeds them the ambrosia, which is how they, the gods live forever. And uh, there she is kneeling, giving him. And this is a beautiful, beautiful buckle. It looks like a buckle, but it was made into a pin. But it's beautiful paste stones. The shell was set into this heavy bezel but it's really, really beautiful. Um, and then you have this one set in an onyx. This is um, Aphrodite and her son, Cupid. And, uh, oh, this was one yeah, this is a, a more modern one, still very be very lovely. She's not a ponytail girl, um, but she's actually a watch. And these are watch holders. Look at how beautiful she is. So this is a molded metal piece from around 1908. And then um, you hung it on your, sh you know, you pin it on your jacket or your shirt. And so when you need to tell the time, you just look and it's the correct time. It's upside down. And here is another Bacante set in uh, white gold. This is 14 karat white gold. And again, she carries the, they danced around a pole like that thing there and they had um, the grape leaves in her hair. It's important for you to look at quality in the carving and 
not just buy any old thing that because it's shell. The quality can vary from student, what I call student quality, all the way to uh, really masterpieces. This was another piece I found that is a shell cameo, but she, ha she I think for sure she lost her bezel because she had a crack where um, the jeweler just, they just pull it off to get the gold. So I set her with carnelians, amethyst pearls, and real amethyst jangles. This is the goddess Demeter, the goddess of the seasons. And I talk about her in another of my videos, which I hope you can check out. I think it's called Cameos and More. I'm not sure. Here's another Roman woman. This was another beautiful antique cameo that was torn out of its bezel. So I bought it. Notice the beautiful curls. Here the artist used the coloring of the shell to color her robe and her hair. And Roman women wore very elaborate hairstyles. People don't know that, but they did. They wore very elaborate hairstyles. Here I set this cameo with carnelians, tiny real pearls, seed beads and more pearls and she's on a pearl chain. And um, trying to find some others to show you. Oh, this is one that I bought on the internet. This is an old, old shell cameo, but it was set into this celluloid bezel, which is fine. I mean, I bought it really because the cameo is old. See, she has roses in her hair. So, you know, if you know your Greek and Roman stories, this probably depicts Persephone, the daughter of Demeter, and she represents the spring and the summer. So she has roses in her hair. And then I found another little cameo that had no um, bezel, so I made a bezel for it. These are Swarovski jewels and pearls and I made her into a bracelet. I think she came out really pretty. Another Roman woman. And you know, thousands of cameos are sold every day to, in, in Naples. Here is a glass cameo set into like a Carnelian stone. This is a more modern piece, but still very lovely. You start to get to know, notice how well the carver can carve hair, jewelry, the face. I have nothing against modern cameos. I do have something against ugly, you know, really crappy kind of depictions of women that are really horrific. Um, here is the image from the Bible of Rebecca at the well. This is very well done. This is set in gold. But look at the detail. It looks almost like a castle in the background. And then this one I bought myself in Naples. We went to the Cameo factory and they had just Oh my God, horrendous, crazy prices on everything. Um, plus, you know, when you buy really expensive stuff in Europe, you have to pay a VAT tax and then you have to pay an import tax when you bring it into the United States. So I found this, she is in 18 karat gold. And unlike the cameos that were being hawked on, you know, they dropped the tour bus at the factory. They were really horrible. This one is beautifully carved and I have her paperwork. So, you know, here she's depicted with flowers all around her in a Roman dress, very sweet girl. Flowers in her hair, so she's Persephone. And though she's a modern face, she was well done in 18 karat gold, and it's a, both a pin and a pendant. And um, this is Athena, the patron goddess of Athens. And she was said to have sprung from the, the head of her father, Zeus. 
and she is a warrior goddess. This was probably made in the 1930s. Let's see what this one is. This is, this is what an unbezeled cameo looks like. See, it's just a piece from the shell. But she's very pretty, isn't she? I'll do something with her later on. They also made cameos from stone, like agate, sardonyx, carnelian. Here is a oh, sardonyx. Oops, upside down. And then they made cameos from, these are intaglio. Intaglio means they carved it, instead of carving outward, they carved it into the stone. This is the god Hermes, the god of medicine. This is Carnelian. See, I'm trying to show you. See how you could see this carved in there? And then these are amethysts set in um, silver. Isn't that beautiful ring? So small, I wear it on my pinky. And then <clears throat> there's shell cameo ring from England. They also made it from other shells like, um, well, other sea substances like coral. And this is an angel skin coral. And uh, let me see, it's another one from England. So they'd ship these, these base cameos all over the world and then jewelers would set them in rings and other things. She's very pretty. This is the god Hermes, messenger of the gods. He is also the patron god of doctors and medicine. So he has the caduceus on his shoulder. And he's the messenger and the uh, patron saint of travelers. That hat is uh, what travelers would wear. And he has the wings. Here's another coral. Now coral is almost, you know, most of the coral you see today carved in cameos is old. Coral began to get banned because of the harvesting, uh, you know, causing extinction of certain coral species. So here's a Greek goddess. One of my favorite rings is Hercules and the Nemean lion. Um, very, very rarely will you find cameos depicting men. Sometimes you'll find, you know, Perseus, um, hero from the Trojan Wars, and sometimes you'll see a god like this. This is the god Hercules. And I talk about that in another video. So I hope you can check out my other jewelry videos. You'll, you'll learn more about that. And here is another shell of a tiny little angel. And there were ladies who took care of the temples and they were, um, she, see, she's holding a little pot. Looks like it's um, incense. Amazing what a good carver can do with a tiny bit of shell. This is a bracelet I found. These are all the different Greek female goddesses. Obviously, the one in the center would be Hera the mother of the gods, the wife of Zeus, who he cheated on her all the damn time. So there are stories about that you can read. But this piece I found, and I really love it. And then here is a 1920s bracelet. And this is... Um, Beautiful, I think it's called cantonelle work, wire work. The Romans are very famous for it. And then this piece is the days of the week with the Roman gods, the Greek and Roman gods in sterling silver. It's just amazing what they could do with a very small amount of surface. You know, that's 
and to me, the quality of a really good cameo. And here is a, one of my favorite cameos of uh, Psyche. And I tell the story of that in my other cameo video. About the Greek and Roman gods in cameos. This is Cupid stringing his bow. And it has a crack in it, but I still love it very much. Beautifully carved. And then you have, here is another piece of wire work on, the, on a necklace. And this is another type of shell. Obviously, um, I think this is a, a type of muscle or the muscles have that blue color because she's sort of bluish so it's probably a mussel or an oyster but she has the long curly ringlets in her hair that's probably around 1920s when they did that 1920s 1930s here is a victorian revival in a type of uh i would say black glass but I really love this piece. Has little strawberries on the side. And coral, real coral. It didn't have this dangle, it was missing. So I replaced it with a Swarovski crystal and real coral. Isn't that beautiful? That's a favorite piece of mine. And then here is a necklace I made using a, um, unbezeled cameo of an angel and I love angels so I made her into a necklace with pearls crystals and then I made her a chain out of herringbone that's a type of bead pattern and then here is another angel that I found the angel of hope symbolized by the anchor at her feet isn't she just stunning Absolutely stunning. It's a very large shell cameo, probably around 1860 this was made. And this was well loved and worn. You can see the, the pin is really warped. And not all cameos were made in, with real gold. You know, sometimes they used what they call pinchbeck, which is like a gold um, plating. And they used 12 karat gold, you know, gold filled, silver. They didn't always come in um, pure, you know, 18 karat or 20 karat or uh, 14 karat. They used uh, gold filled, and I believe this is a gold filled cameo. But nevertheless, and see, it's a, you could really see the dimensionality of it, the shape of the shell. See that? And... Um, you know, you got to learn to look for the quality. Of course, you know, you buy what you, you can afford. You'd be surprised what you could find at estate sales and other uh, venues. You would be very surprised. This is a sterling silver cameo. And I think this is very beautiful. And this, I, I believe, is Bethlehem, where Jesus was born. Look how beautiful it is. But this is all in sterling silver. You can see it is shell. Look how beautiful the little lambs. And then, um, where is that other one? Oh, and here is uh, another Catholic um, saint, St. George and the Dragon. This I found in San Diego. This is set in silver. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, that's really cool. I had to have that one. And then, oh, I found this uh, when I lived in Monterey. And Joan Fontaine, the sister of Olivia de Havilland, and I mistakenly said it was Olivia de Havilland in my first cameo video. But this was from Joan Fontaine, who lived in Carmel and died there. And um, I bought this from her estate. 
And they were sisters, Olivia de Havilland and her. They didn't talk a lot, but they were sisters. And this is the Madonna. Love the radiating halo. And this is set in 14 karat. I bought that from her estate. And then this is a very rare cameo. Um, in 1865, when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, uh, obviously they sent um, images of him to Europe to be carved. And this is set in 14 karat gold. And his train traveled, his funeral train traveled through New York, Ohio, all the way down from Washington, went into um, where they buried him in Springfield, Illinois. That's really one of my favorite cameos. All set in 14 karat. Very unusual. Again, it's a man, so, you know, it's a very, very unusual one. All right, my friends. So uh, I've been blabbing for a long time. <laughs> anyway, I I really hope you learned something. Um, I do have other videos uh, about the Greek and Roman gods and mythology and uh, showed some more of these cameos in other videos, but um, I had restricted them. I, I, I don't know why I did that, but um, so it doesn't allow a lot of people to view them, which was a mistake I made which is why I'm redoing this. So anyway, in the last video, I showed you my Kaleida cycle. That was this one here. <laughs> These are just so goofy, but they're fun. They're so much fun. So anyway, that was the first one I made. And then, <laughs> you know, I gotta keep busy. I made this one. This one's called my rainbow Kaleida cycle. My subscribers know I do beadwork. And I'm telling you, this was a lot of work. So you do each triangle, and then you make six of each design. There's 24 triangles in all. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Anyway, my friends, goofy me. Um, I really hope you learned something about cameos. And uh, go out and take a look, see if you could what you could find. You never know. You could find some really, truly rare ones. And uh, wear what you love. That's what I always say. Wear what you love and enjoy. Take care. God bless you all. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps grow my channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.